I'm here with Jeffrey Smith, who is the expert in GMO and GMO awareness in our country and our world. Uh, he's a hero of mine. He's been out there just pushing the envelope for a very long time. And uh, right now we are in a random hotel in a random part of the world looking at a lunch buffet and looking at what of this food can you eat if you're trying to avoid GMO? What of this food can you eat if you're trying to stay healthy and avoid the glyphosate and all these things that are damaging our systems? And so I'm gonna turn it over to the world expert. We're gonna walk through and see what we got. Great. When you go out to eat, how do you know what to eat? Let's take a look at this buffet at a restaurant and see what we can find out. Now what you can tell are the oils because they're always invisible. So you always ask before you get to this point, what oil do you cook with? If they say olive oil, I recommend saying, is that pure olive oil or is it a blend? Because oftentimes they mix the olive oil with canola oil because it's cheaper. And so if they mix it with canola, that's GMO. Now here we have rice. Rice is not genetically engineered yet. However, in the pilaf, they have little pieces of corn. The corn is genetically engineered. Now this is sweet corn. 88% of the corn in the United States is genetically engineered. It's a much smaller percentage of sweet corn, but this may be genetically engineered corn. Now over here, we have zucchini, yellow squash, eggplant, and carrots. Now the zucchini and yellow squash may be genetically engineered. In fact, the only vegetables that may be genetically engineered in the United States are zucchini, yellow squash, and corn. So if you go to the produce section of the market and you want to buy a non-GMO product, then in the vegetable section, anything other than those is non-GMO. But here, you have no idea whether the zucchini and yellow squash is genetically engineered. So it's like Clint Eastwood saying, feeling lucky. So you may want to avoid it unless you know if it has organic origins. The eggplant, the carrots, they're never genetically engineered in the United States. Here we have chicken, mushrooms, and a dark sauce. If there's a dark sauce, there may be soy sauce in there. In fact, any sauce may be purchased as a packaged food and contain genetically engineered soy or corn or sugar. The chicken may be fed genetically engineered feed before it's slaughtered, but they don't genetically engineer the chicken yet. They want to, but not yet. And of course, the mushroom is never genetically engineered at this point. Now here we have bread. Now this is a, t this is a tough one because a lot of bread contain soybean oil or soy flour or sometimes other genetically engineered ingredients in low levels. And in the restaurants, they often buy it from outside. So you, I sometimes ask, can you show me the package? And some restaurants do, and I can tell right away whether it's GMO. I find a lot of Italian breads don't have oil at all. When I went to Walmart and checked their breads, I found one brand of bread that was not genetically engineered. Everything else had soybean oil. Now here's the butter. You have some interesting risks with butter. The butter can come from cows that have been fed genetically modified soy and corn, and also from cows that have been injected with genetically engineered bovine growth hormone, which is dangerous because the milk has higher levels of IGF-1, which is a cancer-promoting hormone. And so this might be from cows treated with bovine growth hormone, and we won't know unless we look at the package, and in the, in the commercial sense, they probably won't know because it may not be on their packages. So it's a question of whether you want to take that risk or not. When we go over to the salad bar, it's much easier. Remember, there are very few vegetables that are genetically engineered. So this is arugula, this is um, uh, strawberries. You may have heard that strawberries have been genetically engineered with a gene from an arctic fish to make them frost resistant. They did that as an experiment, not commercialized. No commercialized strawberries that are genetically engineered have ever been introduced anywhere. But there, ha there is one fruit, and that's papaya. But only if the papaya is from Hawaii or China. They don't grow GMO papaya anywhere else. So as you look around the <coughs> salad bar, the main key is the salad dressing. Just like the, the cooking oil, the salad dressing may be from canola oil or soybean oil. I had this salad dressing earlier because they assured me it was pure olive oil and not a blend. The cheese, same thing with the butter, could come from cows that are fed GMOs. You may ask, is that a problem? 
Well, the director of the Center for Veterinary Medicine of the FDA said, yes, there are unique risks associated with eating the milk and meat of animals that are fed GMOs. But no research has been done to identify those risks. So we don't know. The risks might be even greater than eating the GMOs directly because there might be a bioaccumulation of toxins. So every time they eat a GMO mouthful, a little toxin remains concentrating and growing and growing until we eat it. Or it may be much less. So it's a crapshoot or a crapshoot. Citrus, cantaloupe, watermelon. Some people ask me, what about seedless watermelon? Is that genetically engineered? Well, seedless does not mean GMO. That comes from crossbreeding. So again, only one fruit, papaya. However, if we let our guard down, then we're going to see the introduction of genetically modified pineapples, already patented by Dole. We're going to see the genetically engineered uh, citrus, which they're trying to do. Basically, every fruit and vegetable in the store has been genetically engineered in some laboratory and is in some level of the pipeline. So stay tuned and keep listening to make sure you're not eating a GMO accidentally. Now here we have couscous and sun-dried tomatoes. A lot of people think tomatoes are genetically engineered, and that's because tomatoes were. The flavor saver tomato was in fact the first genetically modified vegetable or even food introduced in the United States in 1994. But by 1997 it was kicked off the market because it tasted bad and it was mushy. So no tomatoes today are genetically engineered and commercialized. Now, I'm going by what we know, but because there's no requirements in the United States to even let the FDA know if you're genetically engineering a crop, so we may be importing fruits and vegetables from, say, China, they may be genetically engineering them and not telling the Chinese government and not telling us. So right now we have to go with what we know. Desserts. Bad news. Sugar. Sugar in the United States is a combination of cane sugar and sugar beet sugar. In fact, most of it is sugar beet sugar. And nearly all the sugar beets in the United States are genetically engineered. Now, we also have the dairy, which of course can be from animals that have been fed GMOs, and they could use shortening like canola. So you really have to know. And for some of you, this is really bad news. Chocolate usually has soy lecithin in it. And soy lecithin, of course, comes from soy, which is genetically engineered. 93% of the soy in the United States is GMO. So anything that's a, that is a derivative of soy comes from all lots and lots of soy. So unless it says organic or non-GMO, and it's produced in the United States or Canada, it will be genetically engineered if it's a derivative of soy or corn or cotton seed oil or canola oil. Now, when we look at a chocolate cake or chocolate uh, dessert, they may make the chocolate from cocoa powder. That does not contain soy lecithin. The powder does not. It's the chunks that do. So you can ask. Okay, so there's so many things that we need to learn to avoid and people think to themselves, man, this is so stressful, I don't like to think about food that often. What I want to do is talk about a resource that the Institute for Responsible Technology has helped put together, which is an app that you have on your own iPhone. Is it also on Android or not? Not yet. Not yet, but it's coming. Yes. Yes. So, iPhone app called... Non... Oh. Go ahead. Shop No GMO. Okay, so look that up in the App Store. Shop No GMO, it's going to show you exactly what you can buy in the grocery store. It's going to give you the, the brands and the products that are already stepping away from this GMO model and moving into natural healthy food that's not going to harm you or your family. And so let's focus on what you can eat and when you're stuck in a hotel at some point, at some point in some random part of the universe, you can make these types of decisions based on the information that Jeffrey Smith has just offered us. But when you're at home and you're filling your, your fridge and you're coming back from the grocery store, use the tools that are available to you to not even have those in your house. Now we also have a website, non-gmoshoppingguide.com. We have a little booklet as well. Now the website and the app have more than 10,000 products that have been verified as non-GMO, whereas the booklet only has the brands. And in addition, it has a list of at-risk ingredients. So you know soy and corn derivatives are practically omnipresent. Mm -hmm. You have dextrose, maltodextrin, um, you have uh, corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, you have corn oils, etc. These are all listed as the potential derivatives of GMOs 
to avoid. So there's a four there's a four tip process to avoid GMOs. One, buy organic. Two, buy products that say non-GMO on the label. Three, buy products listed in the shopping guide, which requires a third party verifier, the non-GMO project, to verify it. Or fourth, if it doesn't say organic or non-GMO, then avoid the at-risk ingredients. Mm -hmm. And so when you eat at a restaurant, you're not gonna see the label. So then you're avoiding the at-risk ingredients. There's only nine genetically modified food crops. It's important, we're not gonna have to be overwhelmed with a long list. Soy, corn, cotton, canola, sugar beets, alfalfa, which is used as hay for animals. Then there's zucchini, yellow squash, and papaya from Hawaii or China. Mercifully, popcorn is not yet genetically engineered. <laughs> they can't use the bad stuff to make the popcorn? Is well, they just never commercialize it, and for some reason it doesn't cross-pollinate with the other stuff. Interesting, interesting. Guys, so that's, that's the long and the short of it. This is the thing, until we can get GMO foods out of our food supply, which is what this gentleman's been working on uh, aggressively and working with all of these powerful people in, in our universe trying to make that change, until that change actually happens and this stuff is kicked out of our food supply, it's, sheltering us and our families from, from the damage it could cause, you gotta think, you gotta think, I, I, you know, you are what you eat, and these things are damaging my system and, and, and damaging my family's health. And so when you walk in here, there's plenty of things you still can eat. You just gotta stop and think before you just start piling things on your plate, and you're gonna be healthier for it.